Hey everyone, it's Maria. I'm standing outside of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort and I cannot wait to go inside because this is the first resort that I am visiting since the phase reopening started. I haven't set foot in a single Disney resort yet, so I'm really excited to get in there and see what they're doing safety-wise, see what the crowds are like, and probably definitely get something to eat, either at Captain Cook's, maybe a Dole Whip. We'll see what it's like inside, but I'm really excited to get in there, so I'll meet you guys inside. So there's a sign here as soon as you walk in next to some hand sanitizer detailing the online check-in process. So Disney asks that you check in via the mobile app. They ask that you confirm your reservation through the My Disney Experience app. They ask that you have your reservation linked before you come in and that way you don't even have to visit the front desk. You could scan your phone or your magic band right at the entry point to the room number that they've given you and you're able to get right in without having to go to the front desk and they ask that you do that whenever possible so that you don't have to visit the front desk. So boutique is open. We'll take a walk through there. It's pretty quiet. All right, we're gonna walk through Boutique here. This is the gift shop in the lobby of Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. They ask that you don't handle the products unless you're going to purchase them, which I really like that they ask that guests do that. So that eliminates, you know, if you see this hat over here that you wanna try on, you're probably less apt to pick it up and try it on based on those signs. So I really appreciate that Disney has asked the guests to refrain from touching the items unless you know for pretty certain you're going to buy them. Disney's H2O products that you can find in their rooms. Physical distance markers here on the floor. And they have plexiglass up for the cast members for their safety. Plenty of Polynesian Village merchandise for sale. So we just made it upstairs and the first thing I noticed Ohana is currently closed. The bar outside is closed. They're not serving at all right now, which I understand. It is a family style meal. And there really aren't too many people around here at the Polynesian. So I'm gonna take a walk around the upstairs here and we'll see what it looks like crowd wise because downstairs was pretty light for crowds. But yes, Kona is serving. So you scan your QR code with your mobile device and that's how you check in to let Kona Cafe know that you're here. Looks like they're setting up for dinner right now. It's the afternoon when I'm here, so it's not quite dinner time yet. So in order to get into Kona, they require a face covering, as does everywhere here on Walt Disney World property, a temperature screening and physical distancing. Now, it's interesting that they require a temperature screening to get into Kona Cafe because they did not require one to get into Polynesian Village. You're able to just walk right in the main entry just like you always are, and you're not stopped for a temperature screening. That's different from the parks. Every single theme park, you have to go through a temperature screening. But here at the resorts, it doesn't look like they're screening. And the Kona Island coffee bar that's so popular among guests in the morning is also not currently serving. They've also moved monorail security inside, which is interesting. Usually it's always been located outside, but they've moved that security indoors. So on the Polynesian Activities Board, they have the transportation listed. So the monorail transportation starts at 7 a.m. for breakfast reservations at the Magic Kingdom and at 8.15 a.m. for regular Magic Kingdom guests without breakfast reservations. The monorail service ends at 8 and there is no Epcot monorail service. Something interesting about Polynesian Village, they currently have two gift shops open. The one we went in downstairs, Boutique, and Moana Mercantile is also open. They serve snacks. They're open pretty late at night. You can get all the Disney favorite snacks that you see in the park. They also have a bar if that's something that interests you. You can buy some alcohol back there. 
They have tons of snacks, tons of Disney park snacks, as well as grab and go items, like frozen novelty items. They have the infamous Mickey bars here, as well as some drinks. And as you can see, cast members are being really diligent about cleaning. Everywhere you go, you can see someone sanitizing. So that's pretty much it for inside here at Disney's Polynesian Village. Not a whole heck of a lot going on here. Kona only open for dinner, nothing happening at Ohana or Tambu Lounge. The gift shops are open. I think we've checked out pretty much there is to see inside upstairs here. So we're going to head outside, see what the pool looks like, see how many people are on the beach, and we'll meet you out there. All right, stepping outside here at Polynesian. Not many people at Pineapple Lanai right now, which really surprises me because it is the middle of the afternoon, it's in the mid-90s, it's August, and it's really, really warm. So it does sort of surprise me that there are not more people lined up here. But let's take a look at the menu. They're serving 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So even after the park's closed, you can come and get your Dole Whip. That's a look at the menu. Dole Whip cup. They have Dole Whip with rum and the infamous Dole Whip float. It's a gorgeous day here. And outside, the Polynesian is usually one of those resorts that there are always people milling about, no matter the time of day, because it's accessible from the Magic Kingdom, because it shares the monorail loop with the Contemporary and with the Grand Floridian. The Polynesian is one of those hotels that always, always, always has tons of visiting guests as well as guests staying here. You can see the crowd levels at the pool give you a better look here. You can take a look for yourself and determine whether or not you would feel safe at the pool. They do have their torches lit, which I like. Seems to be some chairs available in the sun, not a whole lot, and they have them grouped in sections of three, it looks like, to encourage some social distancing. We're gonna take a walk down to the beach and we'll see if there are more people hanging out down there. A look at the very quiet and calm Polynesian beach. You can see the striking new Cinderella castle sticking up across the lagoon over there as well as the bungalows. There's absolutely no one on the beach. It is pretty hot out right now though so it's probably not the best time to be sitting out in direct sunlight. It might be nice a little bit later on at night but if you do want to you can see that there's plenty of space to socially distance out here. It's pretty quiet. We're gonna take a walk around the side, get another look here at the pool, and see if maybe we can grab a drink. Maybe we can grab something to eat inside. We'll see if Trader Sam's is open and Captain Cook's and make our decision based on that. So monorail service, as you can see up there, is operating between the three Magic Kingdom resorts on the loop. So that's the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian and Disney's Contemporary. You can take the monorail to all three of those stops. And interestingly, they have hung a divider in the middle of every monorail car. Usually there are two sets of benches, one sets back to back so that you can have two partitions in an open air monorail car during normal operating hours. Now they've hung a canvas, I would equate it to partition in the monorail so that a party can be on either side. And recently, they've started to allow one party per bench. So that means you're going to be in the same monorail compartment, potentially with another party. They don't let anyone stand to encourage physical distancing, but you do sit on the same side of that canvas partition with potentially other families. The pool bar is the only place you can currently get served an alcoholic beverage here at the Polynesian Village. You definitely can when you sit down for dinner at Kona, but this looks like the only place you're able to walk up because Tambu Lounge isn't serving and a lot of those pop-up bars aren't serving currently. They do have a pretty good list of menu items. Plenty of drinks, non-alcoholic specialties. They have cocktails, they have beer available. We're gonna head inside and see if Trader Sam's is open, but outside here, just as quiet as the inside. We'll meet you in there. The outside Trader Sam's definitely closed. Very much closed. 
suppose you could still sit out here under the shade of the umbrellas. This is a great place to socially distance. So that's our answer on Trader Sam's. At least the outdoor per portion. I doubt the inside portion will be open. But let's head inside and check it out. Ah. Uh, no Trader Sam's yet. So we're going to place a mobile order. We're gonna try something we've never tried before off of their menu and we're gonna let you know how we like it. So we'll see you guys inside Captain Cook's. My mobile order is ready for pickup. This is my bag. They've set up some tables here. You can just walk up and grab the bag. Okay, I got my Pan-Asian noodles. It was $8.99. This is a really heavy box and it's also a very hot box. I just took it out of the bag. So I'm gonna try to open it up one-handed here. Let's see what it looks like inside. So I see lots of veggies in there. I see some broccoli, I see some peppers, I see some cabbage, and I see plenty of sauce in there. I'm excited to dig into this. It is a really hefty portion. It seems very hot like it was freshly prepared and I can't wait to try it. Although it may not look like it, we've been eating this for a little while. It's just tough to make a dent in because it is such a big portion. I think especially if you're eating this for lunch on a really hot day, you can definitely share this between two people. For dinner, you might wanna eat the whole thing, but it's just a personal preference on portion size there, but I think it's a lot. It's a lot of noodles. The vegetables are really, really crunchy, almost as if they've been flash cooked or not really cooked at all. I really like that. There's also some, I think they're either snap peas or probably edamame since it's an Asian dish. And there's also some cooked ginger chunks in here. It's really flavorful. It's not overpowering. It actually has a really nice flavor. But I really like the fact that the vegetables are pretty firm. They haven't been overly cooked. I hate when you get something and the vegetables are soggy like they've been sitting around for a while. That's not the case at all with this. Even the cabbage is still really crisp. I really like that. It's not Mike's favorite part about the dish. He wishes the vegetables were cooked a little bit more. So it just is a personal preference of what you like there in terms of how the vegetables are cooked. We're going to keep eating this and we'll check back in with you guys with our final review. This is a good option. It's definitely really good quick service quality food. It does come served in a cardboard box. It's nothing gourmet, but for what you get and for the price point at $8.99, I think you get a lot of it. So I would get this again. It's not my favorite dish I've ever eaten, but it has a lot of flavor and it's a pretty healthy option and doesn't sit too heavy in your stomach for a really hot day like this, which is great. So overall, I think I would give this an eight out of 10 overall. So as you guys saw, there's not too much going on here at the Polynesian. As you can see behind me, there's no one sitting. I'm kind of alone here hanging out on the patio, which is fine by me. I think that it's super safe here. I would recommend coming here if you feel like the parks might be a little too crowded and you still wanted to come visit. I would say check out the resorts because there's a lot more space and there's a lot more areas to spread out. That's my review of Disney's Polynesian Village. That's my experience here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the latest video releases. When you're ready to return to the magic, I'd love to help you get here. Contact me at msalerno at mickeytravels.com. All my services from quote to final booking are always free. See you in the parks.